Regardless of their university titles, experience, and enviable salaries and bonuses, professional managers are still human beings, inherently limited and fallible. Every person is a highly complex system that has to learn and adapt. We all start from scratch. However, the challenge to cope with a changing environment keeps growing faster and faster. The world is getting more complex by the day, and managers must realize it is because highly complex systems as ourselves co-evolve with other highly complex systems such as the environment. This fact of life, unfortunately, is a blind spot that management culture has been unable to convey properly. Cybernetics explains why this is so. A first noteworthy example of the coevolution of two highly complex systems began tens of thousands of years ago between hunter-gatherers and wolves. Humans realized that domesticated wolves provided valuable services as trackers, chasers, guardians, and even company. Today, nobody can deny the invaluable services of dogs as animals, for instance, in assisted therapy in mental and health institutes. Cybernetics has a name for any kind of leveraging, whether it uses a dog, or a tool, or a system of some sort. It is called amplification. Amplification created the agricultural revolution, and it is about the amplification of the human muscle power with animal work. Greater amplified power came later in the form of windmills and water wheels, as in staling and grain mills. Knowing the amplification trick, not necessarily its proper name, humans switched to coal and gasoline. Not so long ago, we learned to amplify our brain power using automation and shortly after computers. So today, we can safely say that a manager is only as good as his mastery of the proper use of a series of historically accumulated amplifiers or regulators. Cybernetics is everywhere because once discovered, an amplifier tends to live until a better substitute is found. During the Industrial Revolution, one such amplification system stands out, the organization chart. Managers simply applied to business structure the same method that science and mechanization were using. Dave Snowden, a well-known international consultant and expert in systems, calls this borrowing experience of solutions exception, that is, using the same invention in a different way for a different purpose. The Newtonian scientific method was about reducing the whole into parts. Its managerial exception was about breaking down business problems into simple to do tasks. The practical overarching consequence was to exploit specialization and division of labor. The organization chart reflects this reductionist problem-solving method in action. When computers arrived, they became the new epitome of reductionism. 
simple sequences of instructions using a language of zeros and ones to carry out a boring, repetitive process with blazing speed. Surely, a good way of amplifying human mathematical problem solving and information processing capabilities. Computer programs, now called applications, began proliferating. Computer languages began their own co-evolution, doing more and more, faster and faster. The computer language landscape began to look like a jungle with incredible diversity. Managers responded to this complexity by appealing to another form of amplification, hiring consultants. Consultants responded by trying to claim their own territories. New management fads began appearing like tidal waves that came in and faded just as quickly. Meanwhile, managers in both private and public entities were trying to learn about systems, about processes, about integrating applications into packages called Enterprise Resource Planning, or ERPs. SAP and Oracle became monster organizations providing these systems which are less and less transparent to the ordinary managers. The current complexity levels overwhelm the ordinary managers. Businesses become territories to be conquered and exploited by consultants, each of them paying lip service to their own set of preferred computer applications and management recipes. In the span of two generations, since the first computers appeared in business use, all hell has broken loose and complexity has skyrocketed to almost unreachable and very noisy levels. Markets change overnight. New technology space is amazing. Consumer expectations explode and managers are flooded with ideas. Nothing stands still. Confusion reigns. Mere chance can propel an obscure company with a good idea to stardom and incredible wealth while sending its twin competitor to Never Never Land. Don't laugh. It is safe to say that there are more software solutions than problems. Software applications proliferate to cover all the business landscapes many times over. After all, once developed, replicating an application costs pennies. The direct consequence of having so many solutions available is that so much excess variety produces noise. All problems become selection entropy. This phrase is derived from the thinking of British cybernetician W. Ross Ashby. Competition has produced a great amount of noise. How does a responsible professional manager deal with that? The answer is, managers must start listening to nature's melody and paying attention to its strategy. The sun shines, clouds form, rain falls, streams run towards the sea, birds fly overhead while the fish swim and the fox chases the rabbit. All of nature works without accounting, without numbers, without supervision, plans, or production quotas, or consultants. Nature sets an example of the power of self-organizing, self-regulating, and self-balancing systems. No computers are needed 
and there is plenty of space for life to carry on without producing an ounce of junk. There is a way for humans to return or at least start to emulate nature. But the first thing that has to be treated with extreme caution is the Newtonian or traditional scientific method. Discovering and exploiting cause-effect got us from believing to knowing, from dogma to proof, from because I say so to see it with your own eyes. However, even eyes can be blind when it comes to complex and hidden relationships. Welcome to the age of complexity, of chaos, of systems like vortices, some of them living and some even intelligent, such as the human being. The extreme pressure for survival fostered the great push towards applying operations research during World War II. Science produced far many more reliable B-24 bombers. Extremely complex statistical methods from Brownian motion were used to help aim anti-aircraft guns. Very complex coordination systems using faulty radars allowed the Royal Air Force to be fully prepared for successfully counterattacking incoming aircraft crossing the English Channel and Behind all of these top secret research methods, the work of Alan Turing in decoding the German Enigma messages. From these experiences, the backbone of cybernetics has started taking shape in secret and disconnected efforts but it would surface and become a hard science in the years following World War II. The Macy Foundation meeting kicked off the Big Bang of the Information Age when Norbert Wiener published his book Cybernetics or Control and Communications in the Animal and the Machine. Almost immediately, the Macy Foundation meetings started changing the world through one of its darling inventions, the programmable memory computer. When computers began amplifying the design of better computers, the cat was out of the bag. Change became dynamic and unstoppable, more accelerator than ever. Cybernetics resurfaced over and over with different specializations making great discoveries. Neuroscience, artificial intelligence, complexity sciences, computer science, informatics, and even management cybernetics. You can watch my YouTube videos about this. After a second order cybernetics was explored and properly defined as the cybernetics or cybernetics or the science of observing systems, cybernetics broke the threshold of a hard science and became a full-fledged scientific paradigm, a different and new method for gaining knowledge.
I was present in the lecture where the cybernetic paradigm was declared in existence by Stafford Beer in Monterrey, Mexico in 1990 as an alternative to the Newtonian scientific paradigm. Here was a second way, totally different, of obtaining knowledge in areas forbidden to traditional science. Cause effect was very useful and still is, but circular causality allows us to make many more connections and a better description of how the world really works. This mode of thinking has changed the world in so many ways. Some people say we are now living the information age, other call it the digital age. Regardless, high-speed computers, smartphones, social networks are all the product of a different way of looking and making sense of the world. One such effort is Dave Snowden's Kinefin framework. Roughly, it says that systems can be grouped into four types. Chaotic, simple or obvious, complicated and complex. I must add the fact that among the complex are living systems and man-made systems that are viable meaning capable of independent existence. This is a very important, distinct and special kind. Some viable systems fragment and become complex adaptive systems that also reach goals and pursue a purpose, but without a proper brain of their own, but rather as an emergent feature of the collective outcome of the work of autonomous agents, each one looking out for their own survival. See my YouTube video on the subject, comparing viable systems and complex adaptive systems. Stafford Beer is also the discoverer of the laws of viability and therefore the founding father of management cybernetics, a combination of Ashby's cybernetic thinking and organization theory. After several decades of testing Beer's viable system model, it is now time to use it to overcome the current state of noisy management fads. We now know that people have had a hard time understanding the language of the VSM. And to try to make this connection has been quite difficult. For many, it is just too big a leap. In the past 50 years, many look into the chasm between complicated systems and highly complex systems and step back and walk away. The bridge I suggest is the Universal Management System 7. It is clear that the UMS 7 provides a more user-friendly link to Newtonian reductionist management paradigm that is a remnant of the Industrial Revolution and connects it to an easier way of mastering the loss of control found in a correct and thorough application of the viable system model. Without universal management, the VSM may remain a marginal player in the business world because it is just too general while waiting forever for another chance to revive the modern version of the CyberSyn project.
undertaken by the Chilean government of Salvador Allende in the very short span of the years 1971 to 1973 under Stafford Beer's supervision and guidance. The Universal Management System 7 has several improvements over the viable system model. First, the graphics are more simple and every component has a different color. Number two, it is easier to explain and understand and every recursion is visible and stands out. Number three, it adds the security function which is of life and death importance. Number four, it maintains all the essential features of the original VSM. Number five, the UMS-7 adopts the very familiar input-output graphic shape of a black box. And it immediately connects to current management practices and software. It is many things at the same time. It works as a model, it works as a canvas, it works to explain how any business or government works, and it is very easy to understand. The colors help the navigation and the input-output black box structure is obvious. The UMS-7 shines as a very simple management language and is quite effective therefore. It can be explained in a matter of minutes as it separates the seven systemic functions from their communication channels. We can design companies using the same software both following the UMS-7 as a framework and it is a recursive structure that follows the laws of control. The content of the company does not matter. The UMS-7 language is totally neutral, not ideological, because it deals with information, communication channels, and the structure that produces information and allows it to flow and show up where it is due. Nothing that matters is left out. Nothing that is unnecessary is preserved. The structure takes care of what is relevant and what is not at every level. You want the human manager to stop wasting his or her time reading stuff that does not matter. Management by exception, not by deception. The system becomes totally transparent and also subject, therefore, to social controls beyond the manager's faults or whims. The seven is in a way reinstating the original meaning of the word management. In its Italian origin, it was about breaking down horses, training horses. Every individual horse, a complex system with a will of its own. A UMS-7 company should give you a smooth ride. Learning to speak UMS-7 is no more difficult than learning to use a computer using a mouse and windows and pull down menus. It is different from the previous language, but not that difficult. Mastering 
UMS 7 is like getting an MBA degree course in a matter of hours, not years. For more information, visit kubernetes.com, home of the UMS7 model, or send your email directly to javierlivas at kubernetech.com. Thank you.